What's up, what's up? Welcome back to Real Talking Healthy Food. It's your girl. Come on in the room. Care Bears, you already know what to do. Newcomers, join the winning team because you're fucking with a real one. So let's get into this raspy conversation and get to the business. You the thing music. Just a warning, if you hear noise in the background, it's Taco. If you hear it stopping, it's because I beat his ass. So let's just get into these clips. I'll come back with my commentary. I'm tired of fucking being bullied. I'm a grown-ass man. I'm 35 years old. I'm not a little kid. I'm tired of you niggas fucking with me, so this is how we going to do this. Ain't on no violent shit. We ain't on no street shit. We ain't gonna send nobody to see you. You don't gotta send nobody to see me. But what we will do is when I see you, I'm smacking the shit out of your ass. I'm gonna catch a fade, nigga. That's the only thing. Nigga, I won't, nigga. The niggas that took my money. We already know. We know. Chris, we know. We get it. But nigga, this shit is over, nigga. Your time is done, nigga. So when I see you, I wanna fade, nigga. Get me up, nigga. I wanna catch a fade, nigga. Members and people around him, and uh, as an artist in B2K and as an individual in this world, I think oftentimes Brasby has been a headline. Uh, and he admitted in the interview to drug abuse and to alcoholism, but it was a very humbling conversation where he was talking about being raped as a kid. And I just got off the phone with Fox Hole, and they're telling me that there are people who allegedly victimized him that have sent a cease and desist letter uh, claiming that they were going to sue the network if they aired it. Let me just say this. I don't run from bullies. I'm not afraid of bullies. And I'm not going to be complicit in re-victimizing somebody who's alleging to be raped uh, or uh, somebody who is wanting to have their voice heard. This has happened to women time and time again when you see the Me Too movement, when you see the Time's Up movement, men, powerful men, people with money, shutting down victims. And so I said to the network, and I will say to the people who allegedly victimized Raz, you can sue, you can threaten, you can harass, you can do whatever you want to silence Raz B, but you will not do that with Hollywood or You will not do that with me. So tonight, the show will not be airing. We're going to air a different show. And I ask everybody to tune in to Fox Hole to watch that show. But I give you my word. I give you my commitment. There will be lots of conversations with attorneys. And if I got to call the FD motherfucking I and the police and the district attorney of Los Angeles myself, that show will air, and any person who is a victim of rape or molest or in any other form of attack on them as a child or as an adult chooses to come to Hollywood a lot to have their story shared with the world, they will have that story aired. Set this shit out. So I've been getting a bunch of calls from my loved ones that support me. They're like, take this down, deal with this privately. But I say, oh, you've ruined me publicly. You're trying to smear my testimony. Got people thinking that I'm gay, and I'm not, because I was molested. If I was. So this is how we do this. Since y'all want to try to shut me down publicly with sending out cease and desist letters, let's get in the room with the lawyers, and let's take a polygraph test. Hmm. I'm going to take the test, and when I take the test, you can do whatever it is that you need to do. When you take it, and when you fail, you take this fate, Period. Oh, oh, oh. So I just wanted to give you an update, the updated clips right quick and let you know that Rasby is not playing them games and God is good, ain't he? Amy, don't that karma come back? You know, don't that shit come back when you're fucking up? Man, so uh yeah, and now the difference between back in 2010 uh, and now, you know, is the differences. So let me run it back for those who don't know. So on my last video, I gave you a little bit of insight on, you know, Rasby's story. So Rasby, back in 2010, there were some videos that was leaked. And we don't know who leaked them. Oh, come to find out. I found out off a Davy Way show. Because I found that on an accident. I was just looking shit up. You know what I'm saying? Trying to find the old videos. 
any kind of, you know, interviews and anything like that. So I found a way and he been putting in some work on this. So I'm going to leave links to his videos um, in, in the description box so you can get the full spill like I did. But I was already hit because I was grown when he first exposed it. So I believed him when he first said it because Chris Stokes already gave me Chester vibes, but I already mentioned that in the other video. So video link, come to find out it was his brother who leaked it. Rasby, you know, was on the phone with Clinton Carver, the little boy from Romeo and Juliet. If you ain't never seen it, please watch that show because a movie because that movie is the chip number one number two um quindon tarver can blow and i always wondered why he didn't blow up when i was a kid and he due to his trauma probably it was hard for him to bounce back you know what i'm saying so he had this phone call with quindon tarver rasby and he basically described how he was being chestered by chris stokes and they basically was sharing um, what happened to each other by the same trifling person. And so there's a, also another video available with Rasby talking to Marcus. I've been calling him Marquez because that's how it's spelled. But Marcus Houston about um his issue with him because Marcus Houston is a Chester too. But I, I kind of have the opinion of well, he was being manipulated by a grown-ass man, and he was a young boy. He's been groomed, in the, in, that's been groomed into his psyche for so long. I don't really honestly feel like it's his fault, even, but at the same time, he was old enough to know goddamn better, too. He was a, a grown teenager, not no little teen, not no little kid, like um, these two was. And when that shit first got aired out, um, via World Star Hip Hop, um, what happened was they just shunned him away, blamed it on mental health, blamed it on drug abuse, and made it seem like he was crazy because they got more pull than he does. And they just treated him like shit. So this weekend, I was looking into this shit. Now, I'm not going to give you no full out documentary, you know, all that. I'm going to leave you some links and you can tune in, but I will give you updates in my opinion. And <clears throat> what the clip that I saw that was so heartbreaking and so telling was the clip from the B2K, uh, Life After B2K. And, and that's really how shit got blown up because the other members didn't know that Rasby was making that that type of, you know, um, video um, to include in their documentary. You know what I'm saying? And he ended up exposing the other members for being Chester by Marcus Houston and Chris Stokes, okay? And I think that the reason why they don't jump out and have his back is because... I hope they don't wait until they all old and crusty, but um, it's because I feel like he, they, he didn't give them a choice, but at the same time, that's his story, and he was there, and they're a part of his story, so it is what it is, you know what I'm saying, so it ain't, that's his fucking story, the wonderful thing, so, so that's what happened, you know, he, he got exposed. Oh, but what I was going to say in the Life After B2K, the part that was so telling is when he was with his mother, which so happens to be Chris Stokes' cousin. Rasby's mother is Chris Stokes' first cousin. That's that that's something that is so trifling. And it happens in a lot of Black families, too. It happens in a lot of Black families. And we're told, especially if they got money or some shit like that, to be quiet and keep the secret and hold this grown man's secret. You know what I'm saying? Hold this grown man's problem on this child's chest. That that's our problem. But in that clip, they was looking for some sort of acknowledgement. Really, to me, it looked like Raz B's wanted to put the hands on their knee because they was gonna pull up because in the story, um, Chris Stokes didn't give them no money. They didn't get no dust. You know what I'm saying? 
And so he went to pull up to find out what's up. So Raz B is feeling doubly used because here it is. He done worked all these these years for for his cousin, his manager, and for him to not see no money. And then on top of that, you chested him. So it's like, damn, you can't even get the motherfucking money right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like this triple fold disappointment. Yeah, so you got this um, triple fold thing, and that, and that has to be super painful. And just the look on his face, um, the way that he treated him. I'm going to just show y'all so y'all can see. I gotta turn this down. Copyright. But that song makes it more sad. You just dabbed them up, kept it pushing on it. They asked him, hey, what's up, like that? It's all over his face. I found that to be super heartbreaking. I don't know, it's because I'm like, I got empathic traits and shit like that because I felt the sorrow through the screen, the sorrow that him and his mother would felt at that time. I felt it through the screen. And I think due to her mind being hazed with crack, or she's sober now, but at the time, I don't know if she was or wasn't, but I think, I don't know, her mind still ain't on the right shit, like, it ain't on the, you know, this nigga testing my, my fucking son type shit, they still, I don't know, well, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on that point, I, I just showed that point to show you how trifling that nigga Chris Stokes is, look how he just did him, like, not only did you chester him, but he's your family, and his mother is literally your cousin. Y'all niggas literally grew up together. And <clears throat> you just dap them and keep it pushing. It ain't no, you didn't even play the role right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, damn, like, and you didn't even get the money together? Nigga. So they try to make it seem. Now, the other thing that Davey Way, I'm just going to give him all his props that he put me on that I didn't even peep because it was a little, as I was researching, um, it came up that there was other videos that I saw about Mark Marcus Houston having a 19-year-old wife or fiance or whatever. Bitch, I'm going to leave that in the description box too. Bitch, come to find out. That girl been around. They got some weird light skin cult going on on their camp. Like, because it's real beige and light bright. Like, it's no different colors. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mama light skin. Like, we a bag of, like, a bag of nuts. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just a bag of M&Ms. You know what I'm saying? Skittles. Like, we all different colors just amongst me and my brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? We're light, bright, medium dark, extra dark, you know what I'm saying, so I, I'm just like, it's looking real beige over there, <laughs> like, 
I wanted to say that the whole time. So I was like, I'll wait till I get on my show. But like, everybody is fucking light skinned. And I, I encourage y'all to look into this a little bit deeper. Like, it's, it's something going on there. But the real point is the woman that Marcus Houston is with has been missing for some years now. In the year that they met, she was 17 years old. But what he found through them always putting their business online is that the girl has been around since one of them fools got married because they got them light-skinned names. <laughs> Lamaya and all that weird weird shit like apostrophetus and all that. You know what I'm saying? So they just real special with the names. So I, I got a regular Degula name. You know what I'm saying? But like it's Maya Kia apostrophe K E A, you know. It's Maya with a Y, not a I. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just real Starbucks ish. Uh-uh. I don't know. Not Starbucks, but just like ghetto. I don't know. I don't, I can't describe what I'm saying, but just real. I don't know. I grew up in California, and them girls always got them kind of names. Apostrophe something. So, that's Taco. What was I going to say? Taco messed me up. And, and just having a flashback of being a dark-skinned girl in California. How miserable. But anyway, they married. I got mixed up with who was married to who, but basically they stayed passing motherfuckers around. And they took this young runaway girl and kept her on the camp until she was old enough for Marcus to marry. But I got a feeling that she's been getting Chester this whole time. They, they got her while she was scraggly, threw some money at the problem, and then groomed her into this lifestyle. And I think they're using that as financial abuse to like, oh, bitch, you wouldn't have been shit if you weren't fucking with us type shit. You know what I'm saying? You was whoopty scoop. You was living in the gutter, no food, eating beans and hot dogs, you know, with your dirty ass feet and whoopty scoop. I think they use that. You know, your mama a crackhead, la 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 la. And we got you together. Look, you marrying Marcus Houston from Immature, who was popping in 97. You know what I'm saying? You fucking with the international Chester. Chris Stokes, bitch, you don't get no better than this. You know what I'm saying? Don't you want to go up like the other light-skinned girls that we fucked, that we fucked with? You know, I think they use that situation um, as a way to make, to guilt her in this aim, to guilt her into silence, to guilt her into not saying anything. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what they do. Um, but I will leave that there because he breaks it all the way down. And you know, I'm not one of those unless I feel like it's super, I mean, this is super important. important. That's why I'm talking about it. But um, no, I'm not going to do all of that. I want to, but I just honestly, I need to stay focused on what I need to stay focused on. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to give you that little update, you know. So Marcus, apparently his girlfriend is a young runaway who um, they they done manipulated into the camp. And now, oh, I, I forgot the best part, bitch. The best part is the difference between now and 2010. Jason Lee done got his back now. So Jason Lee ain't playing them games with you motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? They gonna pull. They tried to pull a R. Kelly when they when he tried to stop the showing of of the movie, but no, not this time around, old Chester. This time you got you got the whole internet now. 
So this surviving Chris Stokes is about to circulate and it's going to boil to the top. And uh, next thing you know, we're going to see that surviving Chris Stokes. Watch. And I'm going to be right here letting y'all know everything about it. So Jason Lee is not playing them games. I'm very proud of him about that um, because they were so quick to dismiss him and call him crazy and make it seem like what he was talking about didn't matter and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so glad he got somebody who is up there, who got a, a big, huge platform, and that will have his back. And I'll just use my little baby platform and get the 700, uh, 700 something Care Bears that I got because we care. We give all the fucks. You know what I'm saying? So I'll just use my little baby platform, but I'm just glad somebody like that who's who knows what it's like you know what i'm saying as being a light-skinned brother no i'm just playing <laughs> but no as a man as a man to go through something as traumatic as that because it's traumatic for either party but i think it, it's a different kind of thing when a man or when a little boy gets penetrated by a grown man i think that 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 is um that that's a different kind of trauma that, you know, I I I can relate to the trauma in itself in, in, in regards to the physical act. I understand I know what that feels like, um of what he's actually been through. Not you know, but and it, it being a family member and then somebody in your family your you know, your family is keeping it quiet. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I know what that feels like. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you really don't... I, first of all, I, I, I'm going to get off me and bring it back to him. What I'm going to say is, Rasby, I'm super proud of you. Okay? Jason Lee, I'm very proud of you. Um, and you got my support. The Care Bears is here to support you. You know, just stick to your guns. It's going to pay off. I pray for protection for you and yours and anybody that you love and care about. But I just want to say, you know, I'm very, 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 very proud of you. And uh, you got my support 100% at Real Talk and Healthy Food. And all the Care Bears, anybody who watched this, just put down in the comments, you know, how you feel, how this moves you, and show Raspy some love out this bitch, or hit that like, or hit that subscribe, or do something, just so if, in case you run across my little, my little baby YouTube channel, you know what I'm saying, that he'll see that the people out here is with you, and the people is talking about this, and the people don't like Chester molesters and the people is going to ride with you. You know what I'm saying? And if something happened to him, then we know it was that weirdo, uh, Chris Stokes. And look, I went on his Instagram, girl, if, if light skin could be a definition. But look, though, this nigga get less likes than me, bitch, okay? Go to my Instagram, Real Talking Healthy Food. My likes be real low, okay? But I'm talking about this nigga get zero likes. And on top of that, this nigga just screams, I'm a Chester. Like, his pictures just scream, I'm a Chester. Like, on dogs, look at this fool, dog. Like, listen, I don't know if it's because I lived on the East Coast for a long time, but these, this nigga Chris Stokes and Marcus Houston love to wear, like, wife beaters and short sleeve shirts with scarves, and I just don't understand that style. Hold on, look at this. I, yo, I'm about to go through this nigga's pictures. Like, this nigga literally got six likes. What the fuck is this nigga doing, cuz? What is this? Somebody get him off the curb. We live in the burbs. Like, tell him to stop. <laughs> what is this purse? 
what is this purse? That's just, I don't know. He needs to go ahead, be himself, admit to what happened. You know, I'm just like this, y'all. If anybody in B2K was Chester by the singer Chris Stokes or Marcus Houston, please heal yourself and and have this nigga's back, please. And you know what, Chris, Mar Marcus, you got a little bit of a chance, Marcus. Like, Marcus, you got a little chance because you could literally, you tell the truth. You are a little boy. This grown-ass man manipulated you, especially after your mama died, okay? Because after my father died, it took me five years to realize I was lost. You know what I'm saying? And I looked up like, damn, where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> no, literally. And so, you know, like, and with, with him being a little kid, too, and that baby, please don't go, just popped in my head. But you were a little kid, and that shit was not your fault. So, like, you need to open up, dig in, and check that side of you. And I know with being a Jehovah Witness, um, those weirdos, I was raised a witness my whole life. And I know there's a bunch of testimony molesting ass bullshit going on in the motherfucking kingdom halls on dogs. So, and I know that for sure. I know that for sure, Okay. Because they're quick to silence any bad shit that's going on in the congregation. And if you got money and shit, they're going to extra have your back and shit. But let me tell you something. You could believe all that bullshit in them janky ass Bibles that you want to, right? All that shit. You could believe all that shit. But until you you dig, dig down and in your soul reveal that truth, you're going to always be fucked up. You're going to always be fucking on little girls. You're going to always, you're not going to ever be able to connect with a woman in your own age group because you're broken inside. You know what I'm saying? You're broken inside. You haven't healed it. You haven't addressed it. And this is your opportunity to be truthful and honest and showed some discernment about yourself, especially if you marry this young girl and you're talking about squeezing out kids and shit. Like, I'll give you that. You, you waited till the bitch was 18 or whatever, but the bitch is still showing up as missing. So I'm going to need for you to get some real Iyala Van Zet type healing and dig deep and release that shit, nigga. Like, release that shit. All y'all niggas. Like, release that shit. Y'all was little kids. This shit wasn't your fault. This was this fucking alien, tall, forehead-ass nigga's fault. You know what I'm saying? This nigga's a whole fucking weirdo. I can't wait till this nigga's exposed. Somebody beat the fuck out of that nigga. I hope somebody beat the fuck out of that nigga on dogs. I really do. So... Before I go off in a tangent, because I got to go to work, I'm regular up. You feel me? But I'm just saying, your money, your movies, your artistry, your music, everything. You used to be the shit, Marcus. You used to be the shit. Like, don't let this demon that's inside you, this bad spirit, your shit is not popping. Because your money's not blessed, bro. Like, straight up, nigga. It's not gonna ever pop off because your money is not blessed. You might get some trinkets and some this and that, but it's never gonna be like how it was when you was a kid, when you was innocent and all of this. When you was innocent and all of this, all that came easier to you because your soul was an innocent, an uh, innocent, um, vessel, an innocent, you know, it was an innocent vessel, now you a grown man, and you know you did fucking wrong, so your shit, you know, I seen y'all worth, y'all ain't, Marcus, you ain't worth nowhere near that what I think you worth, 
You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to give you a little leeway because you've been groomed for a long ass time. And I don't think you truly recognize what you was doing was wrong. But that weirdo, that alien head ass nigga, that nigga knows what's up and he deserves the rotten hell. But your ass, you got an opportunity to, to recover. You know what I'm saying? And I know, you know, that shit's mad embarrassing. And it's hard to talk about, like, I know, I know for sure, because it hits, I ain't talked about my joint, you know what I'm saying, or what the fuck happened to me, and a lot has happened to me, unfortunately, but what I'm saying to you is, your shit is mad public, yo, you know what I'm saying, and if you decide to be honest with yourself and heal from this trauma, then I'll tell my story too. How about that? Let's make a deal, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But your money and your music and your movies and all the shit that you're working on is never going to jump off. It, it's never going to be hot. It's never going to be good because it's cursed, nigga. It's cursed by um, your bad deeds. Trust me, I know, nigga. I've been rich illegally, and it ain't gonna never jump and be smooth the way you need it to be smooth because you're you're doing bad shit. And when you do bad shit for money, it's not gonna come together the way you need it to come together. That's why drug deal drug dealers and pimps and all that shit. Be running into so much problems out, out here. You know what I'm saying? It's not blessed. So anyway, well, watch this nigga Raz B. I'm telling you, that glow up is going to be so amazing because he stood in his shit. He stood in his truth. He was forced to grow. You know what I'm saying? He was forced to grow due to circumstance. You know what I'm saying? They put that nigga in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? They put that nigga in the dirt. And he's going to emerge from that, that dirt. Awesome, beautiful, and everything. Watch on dogs. <clears throat> on dogs. And it, it just is what it is. Because God don't like ugly. And what goes around comes around. Period.com. Like, that's it. So, on every video that I talk about this subject, I'm just going to let y'all niggas know, you know what I'm saying? Until you do right by Raz B, everything you do is going to fail. That's why your movies suck, you know what I'm saying? I'll never forget this performance that Marcus Houston did on Showtime at the Apollo. And I'll be looking for that song, too, because it was something that girl, I mean, I'm performance was so goddamn motherfucking amazing nigga like this nigga got the chop like he got the it but it's not gonna be able to shine because his soul is fucked up you know what i'm saying like anyway that's another video i'm just i'm just saying he got the opportunity now if he want to keep playing Going off of what Chris Stokes is putting in your head and letting you think that stupid shit is okay, I'm telling you, you're gonna always lose. You're gonna always have them straight to DVD movies. You're gonna always have those 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 CDs that don't even sell that much. Niggas is not gonna fuck with you like that. They're not gonna put you on their sex playlist because they gonna have that weird feeling that you get when you put on R. Kelly. It's like, ooh, ah, should I? You know? So it's not gonna until you clean your shit up. You gotta clean your shit up. Now, yo, nigga, your man's, Chris, that's a lost cause. Because here it is. Oh, he way older than me. He's damn near a fucking grandfather. And you you still on the same shit. He's living out he's living vicariously through you, through your your talent and shit. And, 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 and that's another thing that's so disgusting because he played a voyeur type role in all this chest of my life. He participated too, from what I hear, but I don't know. It's just sick. It's just, it's something going on with him. And you could tell from the character traits that they have, how they keeping it real light, that his shit, Chris, Chris Stokes shit, stems from some old school 
paper bag by the face type old school check the shit. That that shit stems from some old, deep rooted, ill, light skinned black folk shit. That you could tell. Oh, my spidey senses is kicking in, and and I, I'm probably gonna hear something behind this video, stuttering and all. I got a little baby channel and shit. They still come from my shit, but oh well, come for me all you want. I'm regular as fuck, but you can catch one though. But listen, I could tell, I could tell, his shit stems from some old shit. It stems from some old black people shit. Well, anyway, I got to get ready to go to work. I did not mean to be on the subject this long. I probably sound like I was rambling, but I was just kind of tapping into my intuition on this one. And I kind of went with it because I just feel like all this shit is we're going to we're going to get to see the truth be revealed about this. And. My belief and my prayer is that Rasby comes out the victor. So let me know what y'all think. We wrapping this up. What do you think about Jason Lee having Rasby's back? What do you think about Rasby trying to catch a fade with these niggas? What you think about Mars Quest, uh, Marcus, Marcus Houston? Do you agree with me? Do you feel like he got a chance to redeem himself? And what do you think about this alien versus Preda Fohead, Chris Stokes? Do you think that this weird old chest of molester, old nasty, dick in the booty ass nigga, do you think he got a chance to redeem himself? Do you think God is that good to clean up a chest like him, a wretch like him, a mess like him, a gross specimen of a man like him? a narcissist, a liar, a deceitful, manipulating, trifling ass nigga like him? Do you think? <laughs> I can't wait till they whoop your ass, Chris. I can't wait till they whoop your ass. And I hope it's some gangbanging ass niggas out Compton somewhere that just whoop your ass. Heard the story? It'd be like, this nigga be down at the Waffle House every Tuesday and catch you bad and whoop your ass. That's what I hope. What do y'all think? Do y'all agree with me or no? Anyway, let me know in the comments down below. Sorry, the video is so long. But anyway, let's show Raspy some love in these comments, please. Okay? Can we show some him some love and support, please? And yeah, uh, can you please subscribe? Thank you. And uh share if you care, share if you dare. Peace, love, and hair grease, and all that jazz. I'm out this motherfucker. Peace.